Hello and welcome back to uh, the good, the bad, and the anxious. I'm Rebecca and uh, this, I'm here to document basically my journey to bariatric surgery and beyond. And now we're in the beyond. <laughs> um, I got the vertical sleeve gastrectomy on January 16th, 2021 at uh, Blossom Bariatrics in Las Vegas. My stats are down below in the description if you're interested along with my Instagram link. Um, so I am two days past three months post-op, basically my three month, uh, it's not an anniversary, but whatever three, I was three months on Saturday. Um, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> so it's been a little bit since I've checked in. It seems that these videos are kind of fewer and farther between, um, for now at least. And that's mostly because things have kind of settled down in my life and I've kind of settled into a routine and I've, uh, my main priority has been um, mostly like to focus on myself and my self care and, um, you know, kind of get, getting me through this um, and kind of maximizing the time that I have to lose weight. Um, so plus I've got other things in my life that I'm focusing on um, and it's been a bit crazy, but that all kind of brings us to the topic of today's video, which is combating negative self-talk and prioritizing self-care post-op. So let's do a little quick recap since my last check-in, which I think was around week seven. So now I'm week 12. Um, basically I'm doing great. <laughs> As you can probably see, I look a little different. Um, I'm 72 pounds down. So my highest weight was 380. It was almost 400 pounds, at least that I know of, cause that's when I got a scale. Um, I started pre-op at 363. I got surgery at 350 and now I'm at 307. Um, so I can like, I can taste the 299. It's so close and I'll, I haven't been 299 pounds in probably close to a decade, like at least, yeah, close to a decade since I was that weight. So pretty excited about that. Um, generally the weight is just kind of steadily coming off. Um, I've had a couple kind of, I don't want to say bigger losses, but a couple weeks where I lose, you know, five or six pounds, a couple weeks where I lose three or four, but generally my average is about two pounds a week, which is pretty good. And I'm not going to complain, honestly, as long as that scale is still going down, like I couldn't give a shit, uh, <laughs> like what, what else is happening? Um, but I think one of the coolest parts really is noticing all the non-scale victories all over the place. So, um, a few weeks ago I moved, so I started at size 26, I moved to a 24 and, um, actually this last weekend I had to put all of my 24s in my donate box because my 24s were literally falling off of me. So I'm now in 22s, um, and very comfortably in 22s, uh, and I'm, hoping that in the next few weeks I can move into the size twenties that I bought, um, buying all of my clothing secondhand, just so we're all aware, or I'm getting them donated from friends, um, who've been through this before just because clothing is expensive. And when you're rapidly changing, you know, your sizes, you just, you have to basically every few weeks, like I'm going to buy the next size down and then the next size down, because I want to make sure I have something on hand in case that day comes where my other pants are just falling off like my 24s were doing. Um, so a lot of my other like non-scale victories, um, I am able to walk miles at a time now. I walk on average about three or four miles a day now. Um, not always at the same time. Like I'll walk a mile and a half or two miles on my lunch. Then I'll walk a mile and a half or two miles after I get home from work, just cause there's not enough time. And I'm frankly a slow walker. I've always been a slow walker my whole life. <laughs> um, but I can walk a lot more. I don't have any pain when I walk, which is amazing. Um, I, um, spent, uh, the last couple weekends shoveling dirt and gravel alongside my husband, uh, which has been amazing to actually feel like a partner in the relationship. Like I'm participating rather than just sitting on the sidelines and watching, um, last summer, there's no way in hell I could have shoveled gravel for four hours, but that's what I did with my husband recently. Um, my energy levels are 
so much higher now. Um, and I just feel like I can get stuff done. <laughs> um, I can also do things like I can get down on the ground and sit on the ground and sit uh, cross-legged um, and then get up off the ground without looking like a beached whale. And I just, my movement, I feel so much better. I'm much more flexible. Um, and yeah, I just kind of feel a lot better and almost, I want to say not every day, but every few days I'm kind of noticing a new, uh, non-scale victory, which is fun. Um, so right now I'm eating around 800 calories a day. I was doing six to 800, but since I have massively upped my, um, physical activity, I'm sticking to about 800 calories a day. Um, I drink close to a hundred ounces of water. Speaking of which, um, hundred ounces of water a day. Um, if not more, I think I'm on almost 120 today. Um, I try to get as much water as I like physically can handle without sloshing around too much. Um, I'm lifting a couple times a week. I walk a lot. Um, that's, that's my main source of cardio is walking right now. Um, and then the lifting, I love lifting. So I'm super excited to kind of see how my body changes more and more. Um, I do have loose skin already. I have these little flappy doos under my arms that are nice and loose. I've got some loose skin on my, on my arms up here starting, um, some loose skin on my legs and then just kind of like my belly, like my apron, belly apron is like, I don't know what the word is more like Play-Doh. Like I can squish it and move it a little bit more. So it's, it's weird. I can tell you that, um, going up in weight is a whole different experience than going back down through the same weights and dropping a bunch of weight quickly. It, it's a trip. Uh, I keep telling my husband that I feel like I'm going through a second puberty and like my body is weird. I feel, I just feel weird. My skin is weird. My hormones are wacko. <sighs> my energy levels all over the place. And like every single day, my body is just a little bit different. And it's, it's, it's been a journey. Like it's, it has been crazy. Um, but, uh, I do have to say that despite all of the struggles that I've had, which is really, I mean, I talk about the, I talk about all of them on here. So they're not like major, but there are struggles. This isn't fucking easy. Okay. Um, this is not the easy way out. Uh, but despite all of the struggles, um, I don't regret a single minute of this. Um, do I wish I'd done it earlier in my life? Yeah, of course. But you know what? I was not ready and I had to wait until I was good and ready. And I was good and ready this, this time <laughs> and this year. And I think I did it at the perfect time, even though, yeah, I wish I'd <clears throat> done this in my twenties when I, you know, was young and could spend a lot of time enjoying my body more. Um, but you know what? The thirties and the new twenties, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing in my twenties. And the, my thirties have definitely been all about self-discovery and learning who I am. So happy I did it now. <laughs> um, so on to the topic of today's video, which as I said, is combating negative self-talk and prioritizing your self-care. So negative self-talk is something that anybody going through a journey like this is going to struggle with. Um, and if you're like me, you've probably struggled with it your whole life. Uh, for me, it's stemming from early childhood sexual abuse. I pretty much have struggled with hating myself and hating my body just so massively. Um, and a little bit of science for you here. Um, the human brain, the neural pathways in our brain basically are like a forest. Um, some pathways are going to be overgrown and hidden by brush. And some pathways are going to be well-traveled and wide open, right? So for me, <clears throat> I have traveled down the path of self-hatred and negative self-talk so much that there's a fucking rut worn in it, okay? And the pathway of self, like positive self-talk um, and self-love is all sorts of overgrown. So every time that I go down the positive self-talk route, <laughs> I have to like fucking tear away, you know, bushes and like shove my way through. And it's, um, it's exhausting to do that. Um, so combating the, the negativity in your own head is, I mean, honestly, it's one of the most empowering things you could ever do, but it's one of the hardest things you could ever do. 
So for me, like when the scale doesn't read the way I want it to, like if I want a four pound loss and it reads like a 1.8, I get frustrated, you know, and I, when I don't fit into something, like if I tried on the size twenties a little early and I was like, let's see how far I have to go. And the twenties don't quite fit. And I start, you know, negatively self like talking to myself. Um, or if I injure myself while, uh, exercising yet again, cause I've done that already a couple times. Um, I tend to jump straight down that same old path, straight to the beat myself up talk. I call myself a piece of shit. I call myself worthless. Um, and all that does is make me want to give up. It makes me want to throw in the towel. And I know so many others out there experience the same thing. So what do I do? <laughs> How do I get past that? Um, I fight back. Uh, mm -hmm. I think, would I call my best friend worthless or a piece of shit? No. Would I say it to a child? No. <laughs> and you know what? Would I say it to myself as that abused, scared little girl? Would I say that to her? Would I tell her that she is worthless? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So why am I saying it to myself now? That's the key question. Why would you say it to yourself now if you wouldn't have said it to yourself as a child? If you wouldn't say it to someone else's child, if you wouldn't say it to your best friend or your parents or your lover, whatever, like if you wouldn't say it to somebody else, then why the fuck are you saying it to yourself? So if you're going through this too, challenge yourself, think that question. I almost guarantee you're not going to have a good answer. <laughs> so I try to focus on the positive, right? I look at the things that I can tangibly say like, Look how far you've come. Look at all the fucking shit that you've been through and you are still standing, you know? Look at what you've accomplished. So instead of thinking, oh man, I've only lost 72 pounds and I really, really, really wanted to lose 80 at my three month mark, which was my goal. I just think, you know what? Holy shit, I just lost 72 pounds. That's the size of a small child. Well, in some cases, the size of multiple small children. That's bigger than my German Shepherd, okay? Like, Changing that narrative is so important to keeping you moving in the right direction and not letting yourself get stalemated and stop. And it's the same thing if you fuck up. If you have a bad food day and you eat something that you're not supposed to eat, instead of being like, well, fuck it, I just already screwed this up and I'm just gonna keep screwing it up and I'm such a screw up and whatever. Instead, you just be like, okay, like I didn't eat the best things today, but food doesn't have morality. So what do I do? What am I, I'm gonna take care of myself. And how do I take care of myself? It's by eating whole foods. It's by eating lots of protein, getting my water in, making sure I'm moving. You focus back on the positive things. You focus on taking care of yourself. So self care is a huge part of my personal and I think most people's um, positive self talk. If I'm tired, if I'm worn out, if I'm frustrated, if I'm hangry, if I'm too sedentary, like all of those things cause my self-talk to get so much worse. But if I'm taking care of myself, if I'm prioritizing my sleep, if I'm making sure that I'm adequately food, fooded, <laughs> feeded, whatever, if I've been adequately um, fed and watered, <laughs> um, and I'm making sure that I'm exercising and then I'm making sure that I'm doing something creative every day. If I'm doing those things, then my, it's so much easier to talk to myself with love and caring. Okay. Um, and self care and self love is an act of rebellion, right? Everything in our society tells us that we should hate ourselves and we should hate our bodies. Um, everything tells us we should take care of others and not ourselves. Um, so every time I was used and abused, that told me that I was not worth anything, that somebody else could just take, take advantage of me and hurt me and that I wasn't worth anything. And honestly, hating myself, it feels like home. It feels so damn easy and loving myself. It's reckless. It's rebellious and it's fucking freeing and it's hard. 
it is the hardest damn thing that I have ever done. Um, getting the surgery was the biggest act of self-love that I could have ever done. Um, and I'm not about to throw that all away and all of the hard work that I've done since then um, and all the hard work I've put in just to backslide and go back to the dark place I was a year and a half ago. Um, you know, I see a bright damn future for myself and I am so excited to go there and see what I can do and what I can become. Okay. And challenging negative self-talk and taking my care, taking care of myself is absolutely key to achieving all the things that I want to achieve in this life. Whatever your belief system, whether you believe in reincarnation or not, you really only get this one life and this one body. So spend that time wisely and take care of it, right? So that's it for today. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to post next. I have no idea what the next video is going to be about, but I'll find a subject that's pretty good and I'll give you guys an update every, um, hopefully at least once a month. We'll see. I'm doing my best. I promise. Um, so thank you all so much for watching. Um, don't forget to click subscribe below if you want to keep following my journey and thank you so much and take care.